Good morning. My name is Jasmine Harvey, Student Engagement Specialist here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. On behalf of the MPB Education Department, we would like to welcome you all to Workforce Wednesday. We would love to know who is joining us today, so please use the chat feature to let us know who you are and what organization you represent. You may also use the chat feature to ask any questions. Before I introduce our guest speaker today, I want to give a quick overview of our workforce initiative. In 2018, MPB received a grant from the Corporations for Public Broadcasting to create a workforce development initiative. Our initiative, Getting to Work Mississippi, focuses on advancing education and career readiness. We work with partners to assess challenges and opportunities and produce videos focused on career pathways and the essential skills needed to be successful. We highlighted careers in these five key industry sectors, energy, manufacturing, healthcare, information technology, and logistics. Through this initiative, we learned not only are students not fully aware of the career paths available to them, but they also lack those necessary soft skills to succeed. So we produced a fun soft skills video series addressing the do's and don'ts in the workplace. Also out of this initiative, Workforce Wednesday was born. These meetings are hosted every third Wednesday of the month, and we are super glad that you all have joined us today. All the videos and registration for Workforce Wednesday are available on our website at education.mpbonline.org. And don't worry, I will add the website to the chat feature. Now let's prepare for our program today. Today's workshop focuses on further commemorating Veterans Day. We are joined by the Director of Outreach from Mississippi Veteran, Veteran Affairs, who will also give insight about Mississippi Veteran Affairs outreach programs, benefits for veterans and dependents, as well as any jobs that are available. Now I will introduce our guest presenter. Today's speaker is Teddy Reed, a retired U.S. Coast Guard and Coast Guard Reserves Commander. Reed serves as the Director of Outreach for the Mississippi Veteran Affairs and oversees the planning and implementation of outreach services. Reed is also a board member for the Mississippi Workforce Development Council, which is a Mississippi Veterans Affairs joint partnership with various state agencies. This team promotes gainful employment opportunities for veterans and their dependents. Under his leadership, Reed has also created seven veteran task forces across the state. These task forces meet quarterly to identify community resources to support the needs and challenges facing our service members, veterans, and families. Reed served as 32 years in the U.S. Coast Guard and Coast Guard Reserves, served two tours in the Middle East, and is an active member of the Veteran of Foreign Wars. I would like to welcome our guest today as we continue to commemorate Veterans Day, Mr. Teddy Reed. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. I certainly appreciate the warm welcome that you guys have given me. So uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for your time uh, to, to join us here. Um, again, um, just to reiterate, I am Teddy Reed, the uh, Director of Outreach for the Mississippi VA. Um, I started this position as a veteran service officer about uh, just under four years ago, and then about two years ago, I was promoted to Director of Outreach. So excited to be part of this and uh, to share with you guys what the Mississippi VA is all about. So thank you for that. Okay, I think I'm about ready. Ms. Harvey, are you ready? On my we slides. are ready. We're gonna get that okay. PowerPoint pulled up. All right. So as a director of outreach, I have, um, nine veteran service officers located throughout the state. I'll share with you briefly those locations. I have one at USM uh, Long Beach. I have one at USM in Hattiesburg. I have one at Mississippi State um, Meridian, Mississippi State Starkville, uh, Tupelo Ole Miss, Tupelo Oxford, or excuse me, Ole Miss Oxford. And then um, I have one at Delta State a few days a week. And he shares his time between Delta State and Mississippi Valley. And then one day a week, I have a guy at Alcorn State University. So I'm over those veteran service officers 
and they help veterans file compensation and pension claims. Uh, today, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are the, some of the services that we offer at the Mississippi VA and possible uh, job opportunities as well, because I know that we're uh, all about workforce development here at this uh, MPB. So, all right, I'm ready whenever you are, Ms. Harvey. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So if, if you take a look at this first slide, uh, this breaks down the population of veterans. Uh, this is just the top 10. We have about 180,000 now. That This slide's a little old. Uh, we have about 180,000 veterans uh, within the state of Mississippi. And you'll see that Harrison County and Hines County and uh, are two of the, uh, the top two. And then it trickles on down from there. So we do have a lot of veterans, but they are decreasing. I'm not sure what the message is behind that, but they are decreasing. And we're anticipating about 170 in about five years. I think it's through uh, attrition and then people moving. And we'll talk about that in just a minute of why our veterans are moving to other states. So, okay, next slide. So we have uh, four state veteran nursing homes. They're a little bit different than the federal. There is a federal one uh, in Biloxi uh, that is run by the federal VA. The ones here, I'm actually located today this, uh, in Oxford. Uh, we have one in Kosciuszko, one in uh, Jackson, and one in Collins. So those are our four nursing homes, and we have approximately 115 to 130 veterans in those homes. Uh, all you have to be is a veteran that with a uh, other than dishonorable discharge to qualify to be in, in one of those homes. If the veteran is rated with the VA 70% or more, then that home is absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything for our veterans to go into those homes. If the veteran is not rated or if they're rated up to a 60% rating from the VA, then um, it's approximately $2,000 a month, which is still substantially less than uh, the civilian. If you've priced those, I think they're in the five to 6,000 range. So, uh, and we also have a brand new facility that's going to be in the tradition community. It is um, just above Biloxi, about 10 or 15 miles. It will be a hundred bed um, single occupancy a facility. The VA has made the the uh, determination now that uh, our nursing homes will no longer be dual occupancy. So we're excited to have that. And we will also have a memory unit there. And I'll touch on those in just a little bit. So, okay. So our tradition home, uh, we started on the construction in 2001 and we're anticipating it being completed by January, February of 2023. It is a $56 million project. Again, the, the revenue will be about 12 million annually. And then I talked about the single bed occupancies, which we're excited about. And it'll bring about 150 jobs. We're actually interviewing for those positions now. So if you know anybody that's in the tradition community that would like uh, to work in one of our nursing homes, uh, you know, I think my contact information will be on here at the very end. So uh, please reach out to me if you know someone. And we're hiring all the positions, administrators, uh, nurses, LPNs, uh, CNAs. Uh, the whole uh, staff will be uh, brand new. So I don't think we're going to have anybody transfer from one uh, home to another. So, okay, next one. So in these nursing homes, uh, we weren't being judged fairly or uh, surveyed fairly. So we actually hired a company called Pinnacle. And I just want to tell you about the, the pride that we have in our homes and uh, in serving our veterans. They, they were um, uh, not getting some good reviews. So we had a company called Pinnacle come in and we said, hey, we want to hire this company to come in and evaluate how we're providing our services to our veterans. Are they getting what they need? Are the families happy? Uh, what about the food? I don't know if you've ever heard of a company called The Broken Egg, 
but our food wasn't that great. So the, we hired the broken egg to come in and uh, do our food menu. So, and naturally our reviews went up quite a bit. So I think that's on the next slide, Ms. Harvey. If you'll look over to the right-hand side, you'll see the company score, which is our score, and then the national average, and then the best in the class. If you'll go down to that fourth uh, category there, it says the quality of food. Our uh, quality of food was 4.18 uh, out of a five. And as you can see that the national average was below that. And then the best in the class is the top 15%. So we actually uh, are above uh, or at the national or the best in class in most of our categories. So, and we're working on the things that we aren't as uh, well adapt to. So it's just a work in progress because we've only been using this company for about uh, a year and a half. So uh, there's a lot of things that we want to do to try to improve our service to our veterans. Our spouses may go to these nursing homes as well. Uh, if the veteran is to pass, then the f spouse can remain there until they pass as well. So, but it's a little bit more uh, for the spouse to go. It's about forty-seven or forty-eight hundred dollars, uh, but that will certainly be offset if the veteran's in there as well. So, um, we're we're glad that we could offer those services to the veterans and their families as well. So, okay, Ms. Harvey. So we have two. Uh, our cemeteries. One is in a place called Kilmichael, and one is in a place called Newton. Uh, Kilmichael is a little bit newer. I am excited to say that in our Kilmichael uh, cemetery, we were rated the highest by the VA when it comes to inspections. We are held to the same standards as the federal cemeteries. There's one in Biloxi, and I believe there's one in Vicksburg. So they take a a hula hoop type device and they throw it out in the yard and the and evaluator will go out there and look in that hula hoop and count the weeds. The more weeds we have, the more we get deducted. So uh, they take a laser and put it on the first headstone and they shoot it across just like you see at um, Arlington. And they put a little device on the last stone. And for every quarter inch, our stones are out. We get points deducted. Again, I am excited to say that our Kill Michael was rated the highest in the nation when it comes to uh, the overall score of our cemeteries. So we also have an expansion in our Newton Cemetery. Uh, we are probably anticipating finishing that up in the spring. So and then the spouse can be buried there as well. So whoever passes first, the veteran or the spouse, they will go on the bottom and then the, the next one that will go right on top. So. Generally, the, the spouse's um, name will go on the back of the, the uh, stone like you see at Arlington. So we're excited about those two. We're trying to get one down in the Hattiesburg area. There's some chatter about that. But uh, if you'll notice on that first screen that I talked about the number of veterans, approximately 33% of our veterans are in the three coastal counties. So we're trying to get another state memorial cemetery uh, down that in that area, maybe in the Forest County, hopefully around Camp Shelby is what we're trying to do. So we'll see. All right, Ms. Harvey. And this right here is uh, something that we really uh, have a heart for. Every December, uh, we do a Wreaths Across America. We participate in that. Uh, you can donate to that. Uh, as well, because these uh, uh, wreaths that we provide are, you know, they're at a cost. So uh, we feel it's important to acknowledge all of our veterans and or their family members. So uh, we do this about uh, once a year. And, and the, I think it's the first Saturday in December uh, due to weather. Uh, last year, we weren't able to do it, but uh, we're excited to be able to do that every year so that people can um, know that their veterans are not being uh, forgotten. That's for sure. So, okay, Ms. Harper. Okay, so I am over part of the claims division. And what we do is we help veterans and their spouses and their family members file compensation claims and or pension claims. If you are injured or have a, a, a disability of some sort that was service connected, the VA will pay you a monthly compensation 
depending on the severity of that issue. It could be cancer. It could be exposure to Agent Orange. Just recently, the PACT Act was passed, uh, which opens up a lot of doors for those veterans that weren't getting uh, any compensation whatsoever uh, through the VA. So, uh, and they, uh, there was just a plethora of countries that were out there that were included in that PACT Act. So if you want some more information on that, I can certainly help you with that. So uh, again, we learn, we help also for a lot of the widows uh, that are on a uh, extremely limited income. We can help them with their uh, uh, pensions as well. Believe it or not, the VA actually gives a monthly stipend to those that are on a limited income. If you're a veteran with a spouse, I think it's about 17,000 a year. And if you're the spouse alone, it's about uh, 10,000. So the good thing about that is we can include some of the medical cost with that. So if I have a veteran and his wife that are making $20,000 a year, but they're having $5,000 in annual medical cost, I can get them back up to 17,000. So uh, if you know of any veterans out there that are struggling uh, financially, especially those that are older uh, and on extremely low fixed income, uh, you know, we can certainly help with that. So, all right, Ms. Uh, Harvey. Okay, so here's what we have here. These are our state VSO locations. I talked about them earlier. Uh, but we also, the little circles with the yellow around the red, there's one up around Memphis, there's one in Jackson, and there's one on the coast. That is where our um, hospital VSOs are located. Again, the veteran service officer, uh, I do have, I'll throw this out there, I do have a position open in Hernando and a position in Hattiesburg that just opened. So if you know of someone that is looking for a veteran service officer type job, which they help in veterans uh, in the Hernando area or Hattiesburg, uh, please let me know. I'll be uh, take their resume like today. <laughs> so, but uh, you'll see I have all the different BSOs and I tried to piggyback and I'll talk a little bit about it just shortly. I tried to piggyback my veteran task forces in the same areas because at each one of those little red dots, I have a veteran service officer that is uh, going to support some of the projects that I have going on uh, today. So, uh, and you'll see that approximately 90% of the state's veterans are within 50 miles of a VSO. And that was our goal is to make sure that we spread out uh, and make sure we're covering all our veterans. Because some of the older ones, they have a hard time trying to uh, travel to see a veteran service officer. And yes, we do house calls. So if a veteran is bedridden or if they're um, homebound, uh, we will certainly go see them and, and try to take care of their needs as we can. Okay, next slide. Okay, the Friends of Mississippi. That is our nonprofit that helps uh, with the costly measures of running different agencies. As you probably know, we're all in the state and we don't get a lot of money, uh, but we do have a yearly golf tournament and a yearly um, skeet shoot. And that's how we raise money to help offset the cost of running those um, nursing homes. So if a nursing home does not keep so many people in it uh, per month, then it starts coming out of our budget. I think we have to, for different nursing homes or different numbers, but take Oxford, for example, they have to have 125 members, veterans in that nursing home in order for us to break even. Uh, and the the golf tournament and the skeet shoot actually raises money. We've actually put in three gazebos in the last three years, just off the money that we've raised so that our veterans can go outside and sit and talk with family uh, and not be exposed to the weather as much. So we're excited about those projects that we do. Uh, we just had our recent golf tournament and um, skeet shoot uh, back in October, and we raised enough money to put uh, big screen TVs in the waiting rooms or in the lounge areas so that everybody's not gathered around one TV. So I think we're going to get some really nice TVs and, and put them in those waiting rooms. So we're excited about that. Second. All right. Next one. Okay. So this is what I want to talk about. I'm not sure if my dear friend, Dr. Mangle Shanks is on or not, uh, but she was a big, big part of me uh, with this veterans task forces. In 2016, the Pine Belt area in Hattiesburg started what they called the 
Pine Belt Veterans Task Force. In 2018, I joined uh, that organization. And basically, they are a, I call them a, a chamber of commerce or a, just a resources for veterans. And I wanted to start that all over the state. Uh, Dr. Shanks uh, got wind that I was doing that. And she says, I want to be a part of this. So she and I uh, started with our companies, the Mississippi Veterans Affairs and Building Healthy Military Communities, and we started these veteran task forces. I have them located uh, over the state, and if you look on the right-hand side, you will see uh, all the different places that we hold these meetings, and I try to hold them every other month, uh, and basically we're just a resource for veterans. We have recovery programs. We have I Can't Pay My Bills. Uh, I need some help with my electric or my gas. We have resources to help pay for those. So um, there's just a lot of different good things that are happening. Uh, we do give out food cards as well. Uh, this year in the Pine Belt area, we're giving out $300. I think we had 30 cards that we gave $300 to those veterans that were need for food cards. So we were excited to do that. Uh, a, a company called Roberts Company out of Hattiesburg, they were um, – the corner market, if you're in that area, they're the ones that help sponsor that. So we're very grateful for that. But again, they well, they gave 30 cards with $300 a piece uh, for food. So that'll be really helpful for Thanksgiving and Christmas for those veterans that aren't quite, um, you know, able to, to spend that kind of money. So, um, okay, next question or next slide. Okay. As I travel around in my veteran task forces, uh, I am part of a um, an organization called the Mississippi uh, Development or Economic Council. And in doing so, we help veterans find jobs. The organization that is uh, behind that is Work for Warriors, and they actually uh, have five different regions. They break the state down into five different regions. So they have um, a representative in each region. And what they do is if you take your uh, information and put it into the, uh, I'm not sure, I don't see my um, QR code, but we, we have a QR code for Work for Warriors Mississippi, and you put your data in for there, and we focus on jobs for veterans. Now, there's a company that just really just really started recently called Accelerate Mississippi. And maybe you heard of them. Uh, Mr. Ryan Miller has started that. And that's one of the, the governor's uh, pushes. And how do we keep veterans and uh, general college students that graduate? How do we keep them in the state of Mississippi? A lot of our veterans are, and, and students, they graduate and they go to Louisiana or Florida or Texas because there's more money. Uh, but this became a real issue and alerted some of those in the uh, at the, the Capitol. And they said, we need to start doing something about that. So uh, Accelerate Mississippi, along with Work for Warriors, is helping keep those jobs or those veterans in the state of Mississippi. If you look over to the right, you'll see that since November of 2021, uh, we've hired 339 people uh, for jobs in Mississippi. Our goal was 150 jobs the first year, and we got over 240, I think, that first year. Our target salary was $30,000, and you see our average salary is over 42000 And we do a plethora of different uh, things. We help resume writing. We help interview techniques. Uh, and But what you do is there's a lot of different companies out there if you go up Highway 55, you will see um, there's a Milwaukee Tools being built in the Grenada area. Uh, he said, Teddy, there's reasons why I want to hire veterans. And if you guys know of anything about a veteran, most of the time they're going to be drug free. Most of the time they're going to have their transportation and they're going to provide a skill set that a lot of folks don't have that are uh, right out of high school. So you take a person that went in the military for four years and, and they're going to have a skill set that they can offer uh, that company. So uh, there's a lot of different companies out there that are growing. Uh, the governor just talked about the strong, um, I think it was Steel Dynamics, uh, that they're going to bring a, 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 
a plant into the steel dynamics into the Columbus area. So we're really, really pushing heavy right now in trying to get veterans to move to that area uh, and fill those needs that uh, the steel dynamics has. We also have pushed uh, the Toyota plant in Blue Springs, as well as the Nissan plant in Canton. We work with those HR folks and say, what do you need? And what skill set do you need with that? We just recently met with um, the um, Raytheon in Forest, and we had a great talk with their HR people. And they said, hey, this is what we need. So we work for Warriors and Accelerate Mississippi is saying, we're going to the uh, advanced educations, to the junior colleges and to the colleges and working with them and saying, this is what industry is looking for. So they pair that with the needs of um, the college and, and that's what they do to fill those uh, positions so that our veterans can stay uh, in the state of Mississippi. So, okay. Next one. Okay, these are our places that you can find us. Uh, use the hashtag and we uh, do the Mississippi veterans and serving our heroes. We really, really enjoy in some of our jobs, obviously, like in anything else, we have high turnovers too, but there's some that are really surprising uh, that are in our nursing homes. Uh, they just enjoy serving veterans and serving those heroes. So we're excited about uh, the opportunities that are arise, uh, have arisen uh, within our organization. And we just want to make sure that we serve our veterans. Uh, me being a veteran myself, I did 32 years. If I could have hung in there a while longer, I could have made a career out of it. But uh, I got out after 32. But uh, I I foresee me going there one day to those nursing homes. And uh, I, I'm really excited about what they're doing uh, and the money that we're trying to raise through our golf tournaments and our skeet shoots to to help uh, provide a better life for our veterans because they so deserve it. So, all right. What's our next one? All right. That is it for me. I have carried on for too much of your time and I want to thank you again, but I am here for any questions that you may have. Well, thank you, Mr. Reed, for all of that information. And I do have a, a couple of questions for you here in the chat. The first question is, will you go over again the requirements to enter the veterans' homes in Mississippi? Certainly, certainly. So if you have anything other than a dishonorable discharge, so you can have some people call them an OTH, other than honorable, you can have one of those and be eligible to go our nursing homes. If you are a veteran, rated up to 60%, there is a cost associated with going to that nursing home. It's about $69 a day, which is about $2,000 a month, uh, which is way lower than the, the civilian sector out there, which is like five to $6,000. If the veteran is rated with the VA 70% or greater, it doesn't cost anything. Now, wait a minute, Teddy. I'm drawing $2,000 a month for my Social Security. I'm drawing $1,500 a month for my military retirement. I'm drawing $2,000 a month from the VA. It doesn't matter. That is your money. You spend it as you see fit, but all we won't charge you anything if you're rated 70% or above for rated disabilities with the VA. So that's that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Great, thank you. Also, the second question here, um, you talked about task forces. Are there any other task force being started? And within those task forces, are there any special focus or concerns for um, issues that veterans may have? On um, one of the slides, uh, we have seven or eight of them that we've talked about. Dr. Shanks and I uh, did a big part of that. And we tried to, again, focus around where my veteran services officers are. But a slide or two back, you will see the uh, the locations of those task forces. Again, it's there's a, a, a one of my folks on my Pine Belt Veterans Task Force met with some folks from California and Texas and said, "Oh, that's great! How do you get funding for all your folks that are on the board and the the ones that are actively involved in these task forces?" And and my buddy says, "What?" He said, "We we don't we don't charge. They were dumbfounded that we do this." out of our heart because we have a, a heart for veterans. So it doesn't, there's no 
fees to participate in this. Uh, we basically meet every other month, um, and I send out an invite for that. And if you can provide a uh, a recovery addiction place, or if you can provide uh, food, you know, services, uh, food insecurities that some of our veterans face, you know, we we want to make sure that we take care of our veterans. So, uh, if they need a compensation or a pension, that's the some of the things that we can help. If they want to go into school or they want to go to advanced education in college, we can help them with that process. So. Um, I think maybe Ms. Harvey put that on there. So uh, I would encourage you to look at that and say, well, I want to join the one in Grenada. Listen, we have uh, started about a year ago with this. Uh, we were in the four to five member in the beginning and in the Delta and Golden Triangle area in Columbus. Uh, we're up to 18 to 22 people already in, that's involved in these task forces. So recently, um, I and my team were recognized by the Memphis VA. Uh, for starting these. They were all excited about it and said, hey, you're doing a great thing for our veterans and we wanted to recognize you that. So it's it's because of my team that's helped me do that. Well, great. That sounds like a great team effort and good coverage. I know you've spoken, uh, mentioned a couple of times here, Dr. Shanks, and I do see her on here. I don't. I want to ask her, and I don't mean to put her on the spot, that if she wants to unmute and add anything to what you've said, Mr. Reed, Dr. Shanks. Okay, well, Dr. Shanks is quiet. I thought she might have something to add, but that's okay. <laughs> um, well, I don't have any other questions. Uh, Mr. Reed, this has been really a lot of good information that you've shared with, with us today about how folks can do, veterans and their families can do claims and about the different jobs and the veterans and their family resources and all the service that are offered by the VA. It's just great information. It was a great opportunity to have you here today. I know you are busy, busy across the state. Uh, me and a couple of the other, uh, Miss Shelton and Miss um, Jasmine Harvey here were with you in Greenville on Saturday at the Veterans Stand Down that was sponsored by the Boots and Beyond Incorporated folks there in the Greenville area. And it was just really great to see that program that you all put on. We had the executive director of the VA there as well to speak. And it was more than like 200 veterans there, I think. And they were, and 50 or so vendors providing, telling them all the veterans about all the resources that are and the support programs that are in place here in the state of Mississippi. And I just think it's great work that we do for our veterans who have served this country and given up themselves and their lives and their families. So... If you are on here today, if you are a veteran, please don't hesitate to reach out to Mr. Reed to follow up with all some of the things that may be helpful to you and your family, your loved ones. Um, his information has just been put in the chat. Mr. Reed, again, we can't say thank you enough, and we appreciate your service to this country. Thank you so much. Listen, I speak all over the state. Uh, if you know of a, a, a VFW, a Veteran of Foreign Wars facility, or an American Legion, or if you want me to come speak at, at, at uh, the Chamber of Commerce or any better, it doesn't matter. Uh, I am a Rotary Club. I can do that. And I can tell the people of Mississippi about the services because that's my biggest frustration. You know, what? what is my, my boss asked me that about a year ago. I said, the biggest frustration is people not knowing the services that are available. And today there's a lot of services available for veterans. And I want to provide that information to our, to our Mississippians. Thank you so much. So you heard it here, folks. Call him. He, he'd come and talk to you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank yes, you. sir. Now I will turn it over. I think we're going to do some door prizes here. All right. I hope you all have enjoyed that wonderful presentation. Again, Mr. Reed, we thank you for your service and you think we thank you for joining us today. So, of course, it's time for door prizes. As you can see on the screen, we have some nice door prizes that will be available today, which includes an MPB planner, notepad, pen set, 
pencil tool pen, which is pretty cool. A lot of people love our MPB pencil pen. You also get a stationary kit that has some gadget gadgets on the go, just in case you need to write some notes if you're at a meeting or anything of that nature, as well as you'll get our fine tuning, okay? So we're gonna get ready to draw some names for our three door prizes. All right, I'm going to spin the wheel to see who our first door prize winner will be. Congratulations, Christopher. You are our first door prize winner. If you are present, please make sure you send me your information or your email address in the chat so I can get connected with you to get that gift mailed off to you. Again, that's Mr. Christopher D. Buck. You are our first door prize winner. If you are still here, please make sure you drop your information inside of the chat so I can get that door prize mail to you. Now we're going to spin the wheel again for our second door prize winner. Congratulations, Cynthia Giles. You are our second door prize winner. If you are here and present, please make sure you drop your information in the chat to me so we can get that door prize mailed to you. All right, and we're going to move on to our last drawing for our door prize winner. All right, congratulations, Shakir Jefferson Fisher. You are our last door prize winner. If you are present for this workshop, please be sure to stay tuned to the information I will need for you to put in the chat so that I can get your door prize mail to you. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you to the door prize winners. I will get those door prizes mailed to you. And now I will turn it over to Ms. Shelton for announcements. Hello, everyone. If you want a door prize, once again, email Ms. Jasmine Harvey at jasmine.harvey at mpbonline.org. And our announcements. Please save the date. Our next Workforce Wednesday will return on February 15, 2023. So make sure you join us then. We look forward to seeing you there, and it may be in person. Also, if you have a um, miss their Workforce Wednesday. Um, don't fret or fear. Uh, we will put them on our website at gettingtowork.mpbonline.org. So if you missed any information from today's presentation, we will put it up on our website. Our education newsletter. Um, please sign up for our education newsletter. We will put a link in the chat where you can sign up for that. Um, you'll find out what's happening in the education department where we're traveling across the state and learn about our book of the month and many more um, resourceful information. Also, if you want to learn more about getting to work Mississippi, visit us at education at Dot mpbonline.org. Once again, it's education.mpbonline.org. And also follow all of our social media channels at MPB Education on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we hope you all have a happy holidays for Thanksgiving and Christmas since we won't see you in December or January. So have a happy holiday. And once again, thank you, Mr. Reed, for a great presentation. And you all have a great day. <music>